Searching for photos inside of Alma Photo Raw can be a lot easier if you understand how to use the advanced search. In today's video, what I'm going to do is show you how you can start to get familiar with using the advanced search tool inside of Alma One. So let's dive into the computer and take a look. Here we are inside of Alma Photo Raw. And as you can see right now, I'm just looking at some photos from a visit to the zoo that I took a little while back. And I'm going to go ahead and hit the little magnifying glass in the left hand pane here. I want to note that I am inside of the browse module, all right? This is where the advanced search tool really does come to life. And I don't think you can use it outside of the browse module. If you know another way of using it, let me know in the comment section below. Now, once you click it, it brings you to this dialog box. And this is actually a pretty powerful dialog box. At the top, you have some save searches, which is what we're going to be working with today. And if my voice sounds weird, please forgive me. I'm getting over a cold or I guess I'm in the middle of a cold, but I wanted to get this content out to you guys. So at the top of the dialog box, we have some save searches. In the middle or the second segment, we have the source, and this is where we're telling on one to look for our files. And then the next section is the search criteria. This is where we're telling on one what to search for. Now, in order to show you how this works, the best way that I can do it is just by using a save search. So I'm going to hit this little drop down arrow and I'm going to click on the first one that says 2.8 aperture search. This is a custom one that I made, but you can make your own and I'll show you how. So when I click on the search for 2.8 aperture, you can see that it returned all the photos that have a 2.8 aperture in my library. Now this doesn't matter what lens I used, this is just looking for any photo that has an aperture shot at 2.8. As you can see with this one, if this photo here, let me move this over, was shot with a 2.8 aperture. And if I scroll through this library, you'll see that I have more photos and they were shot with 2.8 apertures. This in total returned 3,210 files, all right? Now, with that being said, let's say I want to do something completely different. I'm going to go back up here to the search and maybe I want to look for something that is specific to a lens, 40 millimeter Nikon lens. I'm going to click that. And as you can see, it's searching all of my photos, but it's only going to return the photos that have this particular lens name. Now, I'll show you how you can get your lens names here in a second because on one in the new version, they do not have the drop down feature to select like the lens that on one is reading. And then you just click on one and it tells you that you you choose one of those options in the drop down and then it'll return those lens. Instead, you actually have to know the name of the lens. And in order to get that, if you click on a particular image that you know was shot with the lens you're looking for. If you come up here to the upper right hand corner, everything that's inside of these parentheses, you'll have to put into this search field. As you can see, I've done here the Nikon AFS micro Nikkor, all that good stuff. I really wish on one went back to the original method of searching by lens, but unfortunately this is what we got, but you're probably wondering, all right, Chris, that's great. You're showing me presets. How do I actually use the search feature? Well, let's go ahead and reset this and we're going to recreate that particular, uh, search feature of looking for something by a lens, but we're going to look for a different lens. We're going to look for the RF 24 to 105 F4 uh, LSM. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look in current photos just so that way this search can go a little bit faster. But if I select all photos, it's going to go to all of my photos. I'm going to hit the add field and where it says everything, I'm going to hit the drop down and then I'm going to come and hover over camera. 
and then I'm going to come down where it says lens. When I select that, nothing is going to happen because I have to actually start typing in what I want it to be. So I'm going to turn on all caps and I am just going to type this in. So RF 24 to 105 millimeter F4 space L space IS space USM. Hey, let me interrupt here for a second. If you're finding value in today's content, go ahead and smash that like button. It's free and it helps YouTube understand that this video is something that should be shared with others. Also, if you haven't already, consider joining the Free Will Photos free community over at freewillphotos.com. You'll find a link in the description box below to the community page so you can join on a free membership and be a part of the conversation and join in on the challenges. So once you have that typed in, what you're going to do is just click off of it or you can add another field. But if you look through these, all of these particular images have been shot with the 24 to 105 millimeter lens that's in this particular folder. Now, if I wanted to see every photo that I've ever shot with this lens, I hit this drop down under source and I can select search all photos. When I click there, it's going to search my entire catalog. And now you can see it's starting to return way more photos that were shot with the 24 to 105 lens, uh, 4,694 to be exact. Now, if I know that I wanted to start looking for photos of this particular lens on a regular basis, I have a few options. The first one that I'll share with you, which I think most people will find value at it, is hitting the save search drop down here and coming all the way to the bottom and then clicking save new style. This is the 24 to 105, if I could spell, 105 millimeter lens. I can't spell today. There we go. Uh, and then I'm just going to, and actually, I want to make sure that I specify canon rf 24 to 105 okay and then i hit save so now anytime that i want to come and find all of the photos that i've shot with this particular lens i can do that now let's say that i want to see just the photos that i shot with this lens and using the canon eos r i'm going to hit the add field hover over, uh, click on the everything drop down, hover over camera, and then I'm gonna go to camera model. And in the camera model, I'm going to type in Canon EOS R. Now, if you're not sure what uh, on one is reading your camera by, if you come over to the metadata of an image that you know has the information you're looking for, you'll be able to see the camera type or the camera model and name up here in your metadata. So now I have returned 4,694 images that have been shot with the Canon EOS R. So as I scroll through this and let's say I click this one, you can see I've shot this with the Canon EOS R in the RF 24 to 105. So if that is a combination that I want to save, all I have to do is hit the drop down and come over here to the save new style. Now, I did mention that there's a second way that you can save a search, and this is called a smart album. In the lower right corner of the field or the event search box, you can click on create smart album. When you click that, we'll name this Canon EOS R and Canon RF 24 to 105. And I'm just going to hit save. Now, at first glance, this didn't actually do anything. And what it's actually doing is it's creating a smart search that's listed under my catalogs. Now, I'm just going to hide the catalog folder here and Let's hide the albums. And what you get is smart albums. 
Right here is that search that I just created or that smart album that I just created. The Canon EOS R and Canon RF 24 to 105. Now, what this helps me with is every time that I use that combination of the EOS R and the 24 to 105 lens, I can just upload them anywhere into my catalog, wherever I want to store that image. And I know that I'll be able to search all of the images. So this is more of a enduring thing and I don't have to go and find, I don't have to go and create a new search for it every time. So if I click this, it's going to filter through all of my photos and it's going to find just the images that meet the criteria of the 24 to 105 and the Canon EOS R. Now, as you can see, I have things where I shot photos with 50 millimeters. And so when I click this on one's going to think it through for a second, and then it's going to pull up all the photos that I shot with my uh, fit with a 50 millimeter lens. Now, if you ever feel like you need to edit these, you can right click on it and then select edit. And when you come back to edit, let's say I want this to be 35 millimeters. I can just change this from 50 to 35. Now I'm not going to do that because I actually use my 50 millimeter lens and I had two of them. Uh, this comes in extremely handy when you have multiple lens of the exact same focal length or maybe you have a lens that goes through the focal range and you take a photo at 50 millimeters, but let's say it's on a 24 to 70. This is the reason why I have this particular search because it allows me to find photos where maybe I need to go and find something that was shot on a 24 to 70 millimeter lens. However, I shot it at 50 millimeters. Or this could give you an idea of the, the focal length that you shoot on a regular basis. So consider this a really good way of searching through your catalog to find images that you may not have been able to otherwise. Now, as a bonus feature of this particular video, I wanna show you that you can search for photos by dates if they're cataloged. And this is one of the, the, the benefits of having cataloged images overall. If you take a folder, for me personally, anything that goes into my personal work folder is automatically cataloged, which that's like 98% of my work uh, because the other 2% just makes up client work. Well, whenever I upload an image, it takes the metadata and it sorts it by date for me. To get to there, you have to be on the My Catalogs tab in the left pane and then you click on dates. And as you can see, I can look through photos from any year. So if I hit the drop down on 2017, I can see that in the year of 2017, I have cataloged right now photos that I took in June, July, and October. And then I can even drill down to the exact day. So if you know, this is great for event photographers, or maybe there was a family function that you went and you photographed and you're like, I remember the date, but I want to go find the photos that I took. Well, I can go see what photos I took on Sunday, June 25th. I have no idea what's going to return here because I don't know what I photographed on Sunday, June 25th, 2017, but on one does let's see. Ah, okay. So this is a series of photos of my family. And I guess I'm also in there. Look at that. I'm right there. When we went to a place called Shuox Falls, I think it's in one of the Dakotas. Don't quote me on this. Uh, but now I know that that's what I photographed on this Sunday. So this is just a good way for you to kind of filter through. It's a bonus. Now, if you found this helpful, I think you're really going to enjoy watching some of the editing videos inside of On One. So you can click that video on the screen now. And until next time, I want you to stay inspired and keep creating.